This might not be an easy movie to review in 2022. Okay, everybody, today we're going all the way back to 1985 to look at a lighthearted little fun flick from the mid-80s that was really kind of typical and indicative of the kind of stuff you got. We're talking just one of the guys. But before we go any further, before we dig into this little gem anymore, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. Terry's a girl who wanted to be taken seriously. I am going to be a reporter. But her body kept getting in the way. Pretty girl, you could be a model. Sometimes I just wish I were a guy. But you know, the male body needs sex at all times. It's a living hell. So to prove to the men in her life she had a mind, Terry decided to try life as a guy. How do I look? Dashing. My zipper's open. That was the dashing part. What a fox. Dresses like Alex Costello. Looks like the karate kid. I'm gonna get him. Today's woman has the freedom to be just as sick and perverted as us guys. She learned their secrets. I have surprise jock inspections three times a week. A word to the wise. And dated their women. Yeah, but I got this one rule. I never go out with girls who say bitching. Now the question is... What's going on? Wait, it gets better. Can a girl tell the boy she loves... Terry's such a stallion. Go on, show me Harry Chet. She's not the man. He thinks she is? Wait a minute, are those what I think they are? Yep, it's one of a kind. My bro. Just one of the guys. She's confused. Of course you're confused. You're wearing my underwear. Okay, this motion picture was directed by Lisa Gottlieb. Now, she really didn't have that big of a record. We're talking about she did Cadillac Ranch and Across the Moon, some TV stuff, and she basically, you know, did a little bit of writing, a little producing, a little bit of everything. So she's not a name that's going to jump out at you, but she did this, and that's what we're here to examine today. Playing Terry, Joyce Heiser. Let's take a look. We're talking about she was on little things like The Last Hunt, and this is Spinal Tap, and popped up in Staying Alive, and Valley Girl, and The Hollywood Nights, and TV. You know, L.A. Law, The Flash, Melrose Place, Murder, She Wrote. So, she was around. I mean, this is going to be her claim to fame. That's just the way it goes. This is her biggest thing. But, why not? Playing Rick Morehouse, Clayton Rohner. Let's go. He was in other little 80s things like April Fool's Day and Nightwish and I Mad Man and The Relic, if you guys remember that. He was on TV, you know, Daybreak and Jack and Jill and Good vs. Evil and ER and Super High and Crossing Jordan and The X-Files. So he popped up in some things. You might recognize him, you might not, but he was out and about. Playing Buddy, Billy Jane. He was out about at the time. We're talking about, obviously, he was in The Beastmaster. He was in Nightmares and Reckless and Demon Warp and uh, Cujo and TV. You know, Parker Lewis Can't Lose and Silver Spoons and The A-Team and Walker, Texas Ranger and The Golden Girls. So, he was in some stuff here and there. You might recognize his face a couple of times. Is what it is. Playing Greg Dolan? Come on. William Zabka, Johnny himself. We'll get rolling into that. We're talking about, of course, he's been in little things like Back to School and National Lampoon's European Vacation and Unlawful Passage and Interceptor Force and Mindstorm and Hot Tub Time Machine and TV. You know, How I Met Your Mother and The Equalizer and The Greatest American Hero. And, of course, like I alluded to, he will always be Johnny. From the Karate Kid and the Cobra Kai TV series, which I think is going to its fifth season now, which is friggin' awesome. So, William Zabka, been around for a long time, we're talking at least 35 years now, is what it is. 
And there's a few other names in this motion picture. I'm, I can't spend all day on them, but I'm going to throw them out there. We're talking about, you got people like Sherilyn Fenn, who we all know. She was on stuff like, you know, uh, Dawson's Creek and uh, Twin Peaks, and she was in The Wraith and Zombie High. And Lee McCloskey, who was on all kinds of TV shows back in the day, The Love Boat Hotel, Santa Barbara. You know, he's one of those guys that always looked like one of those guys. And, of course, you got, like, Tony Hudson. She was on uh, Cross Creek and uh, uh, A-Team. And uh, the love boat and Knight Rider and, you know, places in the heart and nothing in common. So she was out there, out and about. So there's other faces in here that'll maybe some might jump at you. But you have a cast that's kind of like, you know, in that zone. Not big stars. Didn't go on to huge careers. But you're going to remember them. You're going to recognize them. And probably the most biggest star out of the whole thing at this point in time is William Zappa. So props. All right, everybody, I'm going to try to do this in 90 seconds. Well, so I can keep it short, keep it fast, keep it moving, keep it entertaining. So we can get to it, we'd much rather be the summation. Here we go. You got young Terry. Anyway, she is very privileged, living in a hell of a house, by the way, I might add. And she's got an even more privileged, super-duper upper-class boyfriend, drives a fancy car, the whole nine yards. Well, her dream is to be a journalist. That's right, folks. She wants to go on to be a journalist and write in newspapers. And there has to be a competition in her school paper to get your article published in the local paper. She submits writings only to be rejected by the teacher at school saying, you know, it's good, but it's not great. The teacher kind of goes on to insult her and says, hey, you know, you really want to look into this? You can always go into modeling. That lights a fire inside of Terry. And she's like, no way. I'm going to get this published. I'm going to go out there and prove to them that they're only holding me back because I happen to be a girl. So, what does she come up with the idea to do? She's going to disguise herself as a boy, she's going to dress like a guy, and she's going to go to another school and get her paper published. When she arrives there, she finds out the school is basically run by William Zapka, who's like kind of a bully, and all this other stuff, and she befriends this other guy, Rick, who actually becomes a buddy. So she submits her paper there and finds out again. She gets shot down. This time, the teacher says to her, you know what, you know, your, your writing's kind of cold and kind of emotionless, you know. Just because you're a guy, don't be afraid to put a little bit of emotion in there. Well, how ironic is that? She realizes now the issue is her writing style, it's kind of cold, it's kind of heartless, it's kind of boring. She needs to link into a story that means something which she decides it's going to be. Being a girl, disguised as a guy, going to high school, and in turn falling in love with the dude that she becomes friends with. Long story short, she's trying to help out Rick to go out and meet a girl who she really secretly likes. Anyway, she's got a crazy little brother who is the most insane stalker, lunatic, chasing women dude you will ever want to meet. She's got a rich boyfriend who can't figure out why she's doing strange things like cutting her hair and disappearing in the whole ninth hours. And she's got a friend who just tries to encourage her through this whole event. Basically, that's your movie in a nutshell. Will she wind up finding in love with the new guy who doesn't know she's a girl, yada, yada, yada? Will her boyfriend that she's with and she's kind of drifted far away from because, you know, he can say some things that aren't that great. Is she finally going to just pack up and take off? Is the little brother ever going to wind up scoring with some hot chicken, well, one of her friends or whoever he can just snug up to? What is going to happen? How is it going to play out? And where is this thing going to end? You got the idea of it. You got the gist of it. There ain't that much more to go. It's a friggin' 80s comedy, for God's sake. Okay, everybody. Does... Just one of the guys work. Well, yeah. Is it the greatest comedy of the 80s? Is it one of the legendary standouts? No. But is this a relatively harmless cute flick? Sure it is. We all watched it. We all seen it. We all had a few laughs. We all thought it was kind of cool. Before we get going into this anymore, let's get the big three out of the way. The directing? Yeah. It's pedestrian at best. It's not great. It's not horrible, but it's not great. It's almost like TV movie quality, to be brutally honest. It is what it is. Again, it's not a knock. It's not one of those movies you look at, look at and go, this is just horrendous. But it's it's not great. It's just, it, it's there. The writing. The writing, I mean, as far as story, it's okay. It's cute. All that kind of stuff. The actual dialogue, ah, you know, mid-level. Are all the jokes the greatest? Maybe not. Actually, Buddy's stuff is actually the most hilarious shit in here. I mean, he's he's kind of like the star of this motion picture. But, nonetheless, the writing, it is what it is. The acting. Oh, man. 
again, this is one of those things where you're like, man, this is so middle of the road. A lot of the acting can be a bit wooden and feel a tad forced and feel a little bit cartoonish, to say the least. But we'll touch on why that shouldn't be that bad in a moment and why you can kind of tolerate it, even though it does really make the movie look a little cheesy as time goes by. Okay, back on track. Why does this motion picture work? Kind of. Just because it's lighthearted, innocent humor and fun. There's a little bit of nostalgia value in it for anybody my age looking back at this thing through the annals of time and going back to a time when movies were a little bit more straightforward and simple and cute and all that kind of shit. Yes, this movie does have a lot of that. For people my age, for people that have seen it for the first time, it does have a decent amount of humor. It's kind of funny. The situations are thrown in there that just basically make fun of the girl. fact that she's trying not to get caught and her brother is rejoicing in the fact that she might get caught any other second. That kind of thing. It's one of those kind of movies that is, again, farce. Kind of like Bronco Billy was a couple episodes ago. Or kind of like TV shows like Three's Company were. It's, you can't take this thing seriously. You obviously know you can't take this thing seriously. If you're looking for any kind of deep meaning or any kind of realism in this thing, you are looking in the wrong place. If you can handle Revenge of the Nerds, and if you can handle Police Academy, and you can handle all that kind of shit, well then this motion picture fits right in with it. There's some decent jokes, there's some funny situations. There's overall a good, lighthearted vibe to it that makes you smile as you watch it. It makes you laugh after you walk away. But is it going to bowl you over? No, not by any stretch of the imagination, but you will have a decent time. Are there any things wrong with this motion picture? Of course there are. I just named half of them. The directing's not that great. The writing is mediocre. And the acting... Ah, God, it is what it is. Let's just be honest. I think two of the best people in this motion picture have to be Billy Jane, who plays the younger brother, Buddy. He's, he's actually funny in a lot of this goddamn thing, especially because the way he rejoices and the way he sets up the gags about, you know, with the boyfriend and all the other shit about just wanting to see his sister get nailed and wanting to see her get exposed because it's just hilarious to him. I think he was one of the better elements of this motion picture. And then Clayton Roner, who actually played Rick, He's actually like that kind of likable dude, you know what I mean? He's that guy you have some sympathy for and you're rooting for him, all that kind of stuff. He does well in the motion picture. William Zabka, he's so cartoonish at times. He's so goddamn over the top as the bad guy that it's really just a cartoon performance. And Joyce Heiser, she's okay, you know what I mean? But some of her acting is really, really, really stiff. You know what I'm saying? She's actually pretty good when she's in disguise, all that kind of stuff. But when she's supposed to be playing like the girl next door, it's always the, the pout and the stuff. And it just comes across kind of fake. So the acting is what it is. But again, in this kind of motion picture, you don't really mind it that much because that is the kind of vibe they're going for. It's not supposed to be realistic. You got students that think they're space aliens and all kinds of weird shit taking place. So the fact that Zabka, hey, maybe he meant to play it cartoonish and that was just part of the fun. And maybe if he played it too seriously, it would have ruined it and brought too much realism into a motion picture that is completely just out there. Anyway, so yeah, maybe you can give him a slide. And another problem with this motion picture is obviously the ages of the cast. It has that typical thing you've seen in other movies like Grease and everything like that. These people are obviously not in high school anymore. Yes, William Zack, I think, was like 20 when he did this. And Billy Jane was literally like, I think, 18. But everybody else, all the major leads in this thing, were all between 25, 28, and 30 years old. Joyce Iser was 28 years old as she's supposed to be playing this high school senior or whatever the hell she's doing. So... Obviously, you have that to it, too. We got used to it back then. It's one of those things where we sat there and we said, okay, we know everybody in here is in our age as we're watching this motion picture. And this motion picture has that, too. Is what it was. What can you do? Okay. The final thing, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this, but it is what it was. To somebody who was like 15 years old when this motion picture came out, next to that Phoebe Kate scene in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, with all the kids and the guys that you were friends with, the last 10 minutes of this motion picture was probably one of the most rewound, fast-forwarded, rewound, fast-forward moments 
of teenage comedy motion pictures. Yes, the big reveal scene where she goes, hey, look, I'm a girl, blah, blah, blah. And she, well, basically shows Rick the finer points of her conversation. Everybody remembers that scene. All the guys in the neighborhood used to be like, hey, man, I'll be out in a minute. The last 10 minutes of this thing is on. And whoo, what a great 10 minutes it was. So, yes, it's a trip down memory lane. It's looking back at another time when you could watch a movie like this and say, hey, did you ever see that scene? And it was what it was. Just saying. In the end, like I said, what you got is a good, fun, situational comedy. And by situational comedy, I mean you're in a situation, and that situation happens to be funny. And that's what this motion picture is. You're constantly waiting for the hood to get busted. She's got a girl who's stalking her and madly in love with her. But... She's sitting there trying to go after this guy who doesn't know she's a girl. And you got a boyfriend who's trying to connect with her and figure out where his girlfriend went while she's always darting out the house. And all this. It's that crazy situational comedy that has been on so many TV shows that permeates this motion picture. And if you like those kind of TV shows, as we all did, and we all have at one point or another, you're probably going to like just one of the guys. It's a throwback 37 years ago at this point. To another time when everybody could just sit down and laugh and have a good time with a good situational comedy and just roll with it. Now get that much out these days, but it is what it is. Get out there, check this flick out. It's not bad. The soundtrack and the look is total 80s cheese, so it is a trip down memory lane. Don't forget it. It's a trip down memory lane. The 80s music in it is horrid, except they have a Lindsey Buckingham song in there. Nah, that's all right. And the look of it is just fucking laughable at points. The outfits, the clothes, the way the bands dress, the whole nine yards. But it's a throwback to another time, a more innocent time, a more fun time, and a time when people could just sit there and laugh and have themselves a ball. Anyway, be good. Take care. Stay out of trouble. Be kind to a stranger. Be there for a friend. But before anything else, and most of all, never, ever take any bullshit from anybody. See you all soon.